All right. Good Friday morning. And it's a quickie, baby. It's a quickie. Um, so we're, we're waiting for a non-farm payroll at 830. That's going to tell a big story. Um, an interesting thing that I have seen in the market is um, some bad news coming out and the market shaking it off a little bit. Uh, it, it really uh, company specific. Which gives me a good uh, indication that um, a lot of the beating on tech is over. You, you know, when you see a few tech companies come out with some bad news and then, uh, you know, sell off a little bit and then people start buying in at the cheap price. So that's just a good flag that some of the valuations are, are being accepted um, with these companies. And it gives you um, um, some insight into, you know, taking a good look at some of the companies that are beaten down and, you, you know, start buying into them. And this is all long term uh, thinking, obviously, not. Uh, short-term trading, which I think most of uh, the folks who, who um, utilize this channel are into. But um, anywho, um, I'm sure even the short-termers are um, saving for the future. Always a good idea to plan for the future. Um, so uh, speaking of the future, too, another interesting concept is that um, you're looking at China and China trying to seize uh, the grain market, and it's kind of a scary thought. Um, you, you know, they have a, a, a handle on um, oil, and they're causing this kind of trouble um, for us with oil. And I think they see the demise of oil, and that's what really um, this whole Ukraine move is about. And now they're getting um, their hands on a big, big bread basket, um, you, you know, for grains and corn and shit like that. So um, they could still put the thumb screws to the world and the economy because um, we gave that up. Um, you, you know, you could barely find a, a surviving farmer. Most of the farmers around by me um, um, have uh, a, a second job and uh, run their farm and um, obviously two income homes. Um, a lot of them, uh, one is either in the medical or veterinary uh, field and um, then the husband runs the farm and maybe has a part-time job. Some of the lower income farms, a um, couple of dairy farms still left, you, you know, although that market was trash. And, uh, you know, the guys work at uh, Tractor Supply and run their farms. Um, so, you know, I'm, and I'm sure everybody who, who's uh, not living in um, urban areas um, understand what's going on in, in that part of the economy. Um, but I mean, which is absurd because, uh, we were, you know, obviously very productive as far as growing grain and wheat and, and things of that nature. And it's all fall into the wayside, um, because, you know, major corporations take the knees out of the farmers by dropping the prices or buying up the market and then dropping the prices, the farmers collapse or fold into these, um, co-ops, like kind of what Purdue does with the chickens. And then, um, you know, they're pretty much indentured servants when, you know, initially it was back going to the country. So maybe it will evolve back into that. And I also see, you know, the, the clean living, you know, people wanting clean foods, good foods, um, knowing where their, their foods come from has kind of revived um, the cattle industry um, around here. There's a lot of farms now where you can go and purchase meat and that's always been the case um you, you know you could always find fresh beef people always sold uh meat from their farms but now um the market has grown so um, a lot of these farms are making a lot more money which is interesting and that is actually translating into um south america so um people are looking at like deglobalization, but I don't think that's the truth. I think it's just kind of shifting. Now, me personally, I don't understand why um, we're investing, we invested all that money in China and, and, and things. Maybe we thought we can get the support away from Russia, but um, why wouldn't we invest in the Americas, South America, Central America, build that shit up? I mean, we basically can access it via land or run it right up and down the coast, our products, or build a high-speed train and haul materials back and forth. These people are coming here to work. Fuck it. You, you know, instead of coming here to pick on our farms, let's help them build farms and, um, you, you know, have that economy. But anyway, I, I think that's what's going to happen. I think, you, you know, that's the evolution um, now that um, Russia is um, kind of um, alienating itself. And um, Asia is not, China is not um, 
becoming any friendlier. They're actually, it appears that they're turning their back on, um, on uh, the West and Western civilization, alienating the entire um, population. They're going to make a move on Taiwan, I'm sure. Um, so it looks like the world is going to be uh, divided up in that, that category. And I think it would be defensive to start building um, the Americas, South America, Central America, um, and becoming reliant on it. And I think that would just leave China to deal with um, China and Russia. I mean, even um, Africa um, is, is starting to invest a little bit in agriculture. And, you know, it's a good resource for agriculture. They're stepping up for oil. Um, and, and yeah, you know, yeah, well, everybody wants to be free. You get a few of these um, elite governments that, uh, that, that, that um, suppress their people. And that shit's going to change. Um, so, um, well, my, my babbling point is that these are markets that everybody should be looking at or uh, opportunities that everybody should be looking at. And it's not going to happen overnight, but you're going to start hearing the language now. And um, I'd say in five years, you're going to see some aggressive uh, um, movement in that direction, um, provided Putin doesn't drop a bomb on everybody. Um, so anyway, look to that, folks. Look to that. So we've got um, the, the, um, the, the payroll report due out today. Um, we should see a little slowing. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I mean, you can't really figure out what the indicators are telling you because you don't know um, if there's a lack of work supply and that's why jobs are coming down or if people are cutting jobs. Although you do hear companies left and right um, saying that they're freezing hiring and, and, and um, even laying off. So it looks like it looks like um, the interest rates are having an effect, but um, the, I don't think that effect is going to help with our inflation issue. You know, that's a goods issue, and that's something we have to solve. And obviously, grain and wheat are going to keep uh, shooting up, shooting up, shooting up, shooting up until they solve this problem over in the Ukraine. So interesting times, folks, interesting times. Um, all right, so we're looking at the daily right here, and uh, we got this little Z pattern. Um, and, I mean, really, we really can't say much until, um, until NOM Farm. So, you know, technically... It's a non-event. We're really going to have to look at what the day holds and see what's going on. Um, I see nothing interesting here. Um, yet, you know, I'm expecting a consolidation. So there's nothing exciting. I'm not going to trade it. Um, we need a lower, a higher low, and then another high high to really say that we, we've, um, we have a trend reversal. Um, yet, you know, right now we could just argue that maybe we're in a consolidation. I mean, here's our low. Here's our pivot high, well, our previous pivot high. Well, I guess this is a previous pivot high we broke out, but I'm thinking we're consolidating between these two um, points. And then really a break above uh, 43.11, I would be convinced that we're moving to uh, test the highs. But um, again, before we even see that 43.11, I think we're going to um, create um, a higher low and then... Um, move up to the next high and that's what we need on this right here all right so we have a lower high a lower low and now we have a higher high we need a higher low and then boom we can call that a trend reversal and that's what i'm looking at and here's my weekly boom um i mean the way i was trained uh, a bear flag you get have a strong move up which is the pole and then the next bar shouldn't exceed the high of the pole, and then it could trace back a little more, less than three quarters. But um, there are schools out there that consider this. Let me get rid of uh, the Keltners. No, nope, I didn't want to get rid of the Keltners. I wanted to get rid of the Ikimoto. Ichimoku. There you go. So um, there are um, schools out there that consider this a flag. This is retrace. And then the next bar breaking that would be um, would be the trigger of that flag. For me, a classic flag. Um, the high would not exceed the pole's high, the previous day's high. It would retrace a little bit and go on. 
So I just find that those have more strength. But the momentum is working with that too. But I think we're going to see more of a pullback and give us a lower trigger anyway, based on this. Um, so that's what we got to look at, man. Let's have another look at that monthly and see what that monthly looks like for us. Um, really indecisive. I, I don't even know if it's indecisive. I mean, it looks like it made a low. I would have preferred a better looking hammer. But I still like that, that long tail to the downside. So that's it, man. I'm not going to rip through everything because really everything's a non-event until we see what's going on and how we respond to the non-farm. The non-farm comes out in about an hour, so keep your eye open. I know I said this was a short one, but such is the market. You never know what you're going to get. All right, so um, everybody be calm and cool. Um, good luck with your trades today, and have a good weekend.